So what we're learning now with all this self-awareness <laughs> that we have is that our thoughts influence our feelings, which influence our behaviors. And so if we're really serious about getting our house decluttered and simplified in this new year, we have to change our thoughts around all of these things in our house. And so today I want to go through each area of our house and give a completely different mindset. This is different than I've shared this before, but my hope is that if we can change our thoughts around this stuff, it is just a matter of time before you're enjoying a highly simplified home too. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom and we have four kids ages eight through 13. And we've been minimalist for about eight years now. And it is the best thing I've ever done for my house, but it has spilled over into all the other areas of our life now too. And so we're so passionate about it. And I really, really want you to be able to enjoy a highly simplified house in this new year. And so this video is gonna be much longer <laughs> than my normal videos, but I did put in place markers so you can skip through to the different areas that might be most pertinent to you and your situation right now. And my hope is that this will help you to look at your stuff completely differently. Okay, so I wanna go through this video in order of importance. The areas that I think make the biggest difference in how your house feels and consequently how you feel in your house. So we're gonna start in the kitchen and then we're gonna move on to clothing next. So here's the new mindset for the kitchen. Everything is harder in a cluttered kitchen. Everything is harder in a cluttered kitchen. Cooking is harder, cleaning is harder, staying up on the dishes is harder. Maybe you wanna involve your kids in cooking and cleaning, that's harder. Everything is harder in a cluttered kitchen because we're trying to navigate around stuff that we're not using. It's not easy to get to the stuff we use every single day. So as we head into the kitchen for another round of decluttering this year, remind yourself, everything is harder in a cluttered kitchen and that stuff that you're not using is standing in the way of you being able to cook and clean really easily you hear it said that the kitchen is the heart of your home but i do believe that having your kitchen simplified and decluttered changes everything about your house and how you feel about yourself so now i'm going to share a few of my favorite tactics and ideas for decluttering your kitchen I'm gonna tell you three things you need to get and I really need you to actually get them if you are serious about decluttering your kitchen in 15 minutes. So you need two cardboard boxes and a black trash bag. We are all out of black, I can't believe it. I don't normally let that happen. Like Peter Walsh says, if you don't have a lot of time to declutter, the way that you counteract that is to have predetermined categories. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna label these boxes and how that makes all the difference in what we're gonna do today. It's gonna to take all of the emotion out of it. It's wonderful. But I know we all have limited time or energy or we just worry about making mistakes or we get hard on ourselves when we go to declutter the kitchen. So we want someone to guide us through it, right? Let's do that today. I totally forgot to tell you the other good news about this method too. You can do it when your kitchen is a mess. Isn't that awesome? Because often we feel like, oh, I should get my kitchen cleaned up before I try to declutter it. Uh, nope, you can do it when it's a mess. In fact, the mess is gonna give us clues to, about what to declutter. We want to label these two boxes. Uh, if they're different sizes, we're gonna label the bigger one for donations and the smaller one for time will tell. Time really does tell us if we should be keeping <laughs> things or not. And then we have our garbage bag. Let me show you how this works, how we're gonna use our clutter and our mess in our kitchen to give us clues about what to declutter to get us started and to get the ball rolling. Let's start over here by our coffee maker. Okay, so often why our kitchen gets cluttered and stuff stays out or it's not easy to tidy up at the end of the day is because it has to be just as easy to put stuff away as it is to leave it out. If you chronically have things sitting out, like say by your coffee maker, that's a good sign that there's not an easy spot to put it away. Now, if I take like this box of K-Pods and I'm like, okay, I, I need to find an easier spot for this. What I wanna do is say, this is where I use it. So ideally it needs to be right here. Again, it has to be as easy to put this away as it is to leave it out. So logic would tell us it needs to be somewhere right here. Okay, so I'm looking at my spaces. I'm not gonna put it up there. This cabinet down here would be the next logical spot to put it. So now I'm using this to guide me because I need to find a spot for this and not only find a spot, but it has to only be like half to two thirds full because that's what makes it easy to put away. If I have to move stuff around, again, easier to leave it out, not easy to put it away. So we need to free up a lot of room. Okay, so I'm looking in here 
And then I can say like, oh, let's look at this miscellaneous bin here that is taking up precious real estate. What is this? I don't even know. This is in a box. Oh yeah. So this is something I just took when I, from my grandma when I was leaving her house. I didn't actually want it. That is for sure going into the donation box. This I use this. Do you know how long I've been keeping this thinking I'm going to use it? I don't know. Like I still have an attachment to it. I'm not sure if I'm going to miss it. So I'm going to put this in my time will tell bin. So what we're doing is we have our predetermined categories of time will tell, donate, and trash. And so if I hold something up and I have not used it in the past year, that means that it's not serving the current season that I'm in. I feel like I get kind of intense with this. I'll, I'll slow down a little bit because I want you to have a decluttered kitchen because it is so <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna hold something up. If I have not used it in the past year, that is my signal. It does not matter if I spent money on it. I thought I was gonna use it. It means that it's not serving me in my current season of life. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with the immersion blender. It's just a clear sign that it doesn't fit in my kitchen for this season. And that is totally fine. So this, it either is gonna go in the donation or the time will tell bin. Again, we're using these predetermined categories. So I might be like, oh, I just don't know if I can donate it yet. Okay. Time will tell Ben, no worries. I'm not getting hung up on anything in here. These other couple things in here, I, I think I'm gonna just throw these into the time will tell too. And then, do you know what's so cool about that? Ew, once I empty out the gross stuff in the bottom. Wow, now I can put my toaster into this handy little bin. I'll have to relabel it toaster. And now it is so much easier to pull the toaster in and out because it's in a bin and does that fit like perfectly? Awesome, my toaster functions better now and you can't really see it in here, but I have freed up a very nice, very easy to get to spot to put my K-Pods now. So this is what we're needing to do is to prioritize our current season and how we're cooking and using our kitchen. And that's how we're setting it up. It doesn't matter what we got for our wedding, what we did three years ago, what season are we in now? And that is how we are decluttering our kitchen. Okay, uh, let's find a couple other examples. All right, next I wanna talk about free pass day with the garbage bag. I think I have a, a video on the guilt-free timer, but basically, can we just give ourselves permission for one day to throw stuff away, even if potentially it could be donated or someone else could use it or whatever the case may be. Because the truth is, is me getting one full garbage bag of extra stuff out of my kitchen is gonna drastically change how my kitchen feels. On the other hand, one bag of trash of stuff that could potentially have been donated or recycled or whatever, shared with a coworker, I don't know. It's not gonna make a major impact on the environment. I don't wanna be wasteful, I don't wanna be careless, I wanna leave the earth in a better place for our kids, right? Like all of that. But today, right here now, I need breathing room. I need to prioritize my mental health, how my kitchen feels and functions, my relationship with my family over a bag of garbage. Here's what I mean. As you're looking at, again, and why it's okay to do this in a messy kitchen, as we're looking at maybe the stuff on our counter, I'm gonna see things like this. We don't need this cup anymore. And there's some other garbage on here. In the past, I'd be like, okay, I should wash this. I should put it through the dishwasher and then I'll donate it. What's the problem? It comes through the dishwasher and it doesn't get donated. And for me right now in a busy season, any little thing like this can totally derail my decluttering. If I put it in the garbage bag right now, it's done. I walk it out to the garbage can, it is done. However, if I put this off and say, oh, I need to wash it and donate it, it's not done. It's still floating out there, it's not done. I want you to be done with your kitchen in 15 minutes or at least have it way better. Again, we're talking about this idea of things need to be just as easy to put away as they are to leave out. So I'm looking at like, okay, why are the bread and tortilla chips always sitting out when there's a drawer right here that they're supposed to go into? Great question. Let's take a look at the drawer. Maybe there's too much stuff in there. Okay, well this drawer doesn't actually look that bad, so maybe my family was just being lazy and not putting stuff away. But I do see a few things in here, like, these things came with our Nutribullet. I've never used these once. I have used this lid, so I'm gonna keep this. Again, I'm not even gonna donate these. I'm gonna throw them in the garbage, and that is totally okay. And then I'm gonna look through anything else. Um, I think those ones are okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, everything else just 
didn't get put away. And that happens too. <laughs> okay, I wanna show you um, my four burner trick for simplifying pots and pans next. But just so you know, I like literally told the kids last night and this morning, don't clean up the kitchen. <laughs> like I'm gonna do a video in there. So it is super easy to stay on top of our kitchen now that we have it simplified, even though there are six of us using it all day. We're all home all the time. <laughs> and so I don't have amazing kids and spouse that just automatically do everything. I have a kitchen with very low inventory and that's how I keep up on it and that's how they keep up on it too. Okay, let's talk about pots and pans. What I recommend doing is using your stove as a template to declutter your pots and pans. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna take our four favorite pots and pans that we use all the time and we're gonna put them on the burners and then we're gonna have one extra. So what I'm basically doing is encouraging you to simplify down to just five pots or pans. And I know many are gonna be like, that is absurd. <laughs> like, But I really want to encourage you to try it because um, I've done this with many others now and 99% of the time it's like the response is, wow, that's actually all we need. But the beautiful part is that then you don't have dishes stacked up by the sink, you don't have tons of dirty pots and pans on here, and your cabinet or cupboard wherever you keep your pots and pans is so much easier to take stuff in and out of. I don't expect you to like believe me right away until you've had a time to try this a little bit. So use your time will tell bin and put any extras into there if you don't have the confidence yet to declutter them and just try it out and I really think it's gonna work well for you too. And it's okay to put dirty pots and pans on the stove. Like if they're like, I'm seeing one over by the sink right now that we use, totally okay. We're just using it as placeholders to see what we need. And I don't even use the fifth one, like four two frying pans, a smaller pot and a bigger pot. They all have lids too. It's all we need, all six of us, home, all the time. It's seriously all that we need. All right, so uh, we got the pots and pans decluttered. We're giving our surfaces cleared off, looking for clues for that. We're okay just throwing stuff away today. And now let's talk about a sign that you might have too many dishes. So if you ever end up with dishes stacked up next to the sink, it might just be a sign that you have too many. So for us, we have one place setting per person in our household, not a lot of mugs and cups because I wasn't good at staying on top of the dishes. So if we have a lower inventory of dishes, they have to get washed every day or we don't have dishes tomorrow. And for me, that works so well. So what I wanna encourage you today is that if this has been a problem for you, it happens to a lot of us, then we have two options. We can get in the habit of running the dishwasher every night, but again, I was never successful at that, or we can just limit our dishes. And so this, we wanna wash them first. If there's any you can clearly throw away, go ahead and toss those, but then let's run them through the dishwasher and take out duplicates, extras, you know, the water bottles, the cups that we get, random places that just creep in. All this stuff that wasn't intentionally brought into our kitchen, let's go ahead and either donate it or put it in the time will tell bin. And your kitchen is going to feel so much better and you're never gonna have big stacks of dishes next to the sink again. That is the best feeling. Okay, let's talk about kitchen appliances because this can free up massive real estate. And again, make it so easy to put away pantry items and grocery items and that type of stuff that we actually use every single day. So we're really gonna lean on our rules now because I know the guilt that creeps in. I'm gonna look at each appliance. Have I used it in the past year? If not, there is no exception. If not, it is going into one of my three predetermined categories. So I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna say, I have not used this in the past year. That means it has to go in the donation, time will tell, or garbage. So which one, it's just which one am I gonna put it in? Um, okay, I'll, eh, I'm still not 100% sure. I'm gonna put it in the time will tell bin. On to the next one. Have I used this in the last year? No, okay, you know what, I don't. I, I could sell it on Marketplace, I don't have time to sell stuff on Marketplace. I'm gonna donate it and hope that I'm just planting super great seeds. I hope someone else is blessed by it. I hope they're excited when they see it at the thrift store. I am just gonna donate it because I'm not wasting any more of my precious energy and bandwidth on inanimate objects, on stuff. My priority right now is my peace of mind and my family's peace of mind. See, I'm getting like worked up again. <laughs> I know how much this stuff like hangs us up, right? And how it can make us feel not good about ourselves and feel like we've been wasteful or impulsive or whatever. We all do it, it's totally fine. 
Take your kitchen back though, because it's gonna feel so good and you're never gonna to have to be taunted by the dumb thing you bought again if you just get rid of it today. All right, so one more area where I wanna look at the, what the clues are telling me. Uh, I bought these groceries yesterday and they have not get, gotten put away, which usually means that our pantry cabinet over here is getting a little bit full. So what I wanna do is look through quick and see if I have acquired any random groceries that we're not gonna use because it's still, I'm, I'm a lot better now, but it still happens every once in a while. Like I'm even seeing this right here. I really thought I was gonna use that for a recipe um, and I haven't. So right now the season we're in, I'm just gonna put this on our extra grocery shelves in the basement because it's it would be more of a thing like, if, if we ran out of all of our food, I would we would eat this there. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw it down there uh, because it could, it's still perfectly fine. And this was, this is a little bit expensive, but I'm gonna look and see if there's any other like random things that either can get, just get donated, get out of here, because I need to have space in here to move stuff around for it to function well, or if there's anything else I can just move down to the basement. That's why we keep our extra and emergency storage in the basement because it has to function well up here, or this is what happens, right? Stuff doesn't get put away. And remember, it's completely normal to declutter your kitchen in layers. We often talk about the onion method when it comes to decluttering, where we make a pass through, it feels better, we like how it's feeling, and then we go back and make another pass. So we build up our decluttering muscles, we gain confidence in ourselves as we go, so it's okay if you don't completely declutter it in one pass. In fact, it's actually encouraged to do it in multiple layers. I just realized we can't be done yet. We better talk about food storage containers real quick. Okay, so here is a fast way to go through your food storage containers. Match up the lid with the bottom. Again, if there's any you don't want, throw it in the recycling or garbage. Match up the lids so that they're on it. Set the space where you keep it. For us, it's like the third shelf in this cabinet. Put as many as fit in there. If you have any other extras that are really nice, put them in your time will tell bin, put the rest in the garbage or recycling and move on with life. <laughs> okay, so there's a, kind of a lot in this. So I wanna make a printable and I'll put a link down below if you wanna grab that and just have a little bit of like a written guide as you go through your kitchen. But again, I think the biggest thing I want to encourage you is to set up your kitchen for your current season of life. How are you cooking and using your kitchen right now? And if there's things that you've used in seasons past, then let's either pack it away and move it out of our kitchen for now, or be willing to donate it and let it go, trusting that as we continue to promote peace and our own mental health inside of our house, that if that season comes back around, you'll be able to get the stuff again too. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to clothing. This can be a little tricky, but I have a good method. It starts by making our bed. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here's our new mindset around clothing. You're wasting too much time and energy getting dressed in the morning and feeling bad about yourself in the process. So for many of us, we have tons of clothes and nothing to wear, <laughs> right? Can you relate to that at all? So what I wanna challenge you with with this new year is to try a uniform or a highly simplified wardrobe. And so we got to visit with Courtney from Project 333 and what she proposes is that you have 33 items in a three month wardrobe. For, so for three months, you wear 33 pieces and this includes tops, bottoms, shoes, jewelry, it's, it's pretty much everything. Chances are, even if your closet is stuffed full of clothes right now, you're doing the challenge already. You're probably wearing a yeah. very small selection of clothes. Yeah. I couldn't believe it once I really simplified my wardrobe and my whole thing was like, I am only going to have things in my closet that are an option for today that fit right now and that I feel good in. And it was a very small amount of clothing when I, when that was my criteria for simplifying. But I couldn't believe how once I cleared that extra stuff out, how much better I felt about myself. I did not realize how much that stuff was mocking me and being like, you used to be able to fit into this, now you don't. Like you said, you spent money on it. I couldn't believe that and how I feel so much more positively about myself and my clothing now that that stuff is gone and everything fits. It is, I mean, it is such a gift that we give to ourselves and it does, it's, it's totally irrelevant what size you are right now. It's saying that right now I'm going to have 33 pieces that I feel good in. Yeah. I mean, I think there's this inner monologue for some of us that goes something like I have to fit into all of my clothes. Like it's my job to fit into my clothes. 
And so if something's a little tight, that's a reflection on me in a, in a bad way. And I reject that completely. I mean, I think it's our clothes job to fit us. Yeah. So if there's something that doesn't fit, exchange it or replace it for something that does instead of, I'm just going to hold on to this for another couple of years until I can yeah. fit into this. While we're like telling ourselves that we're trying to fit in, we're spending so much energy trying to fit into our clothes. Like what aren't we doing in the meantime? Yeah. And yeah. what could we be doing that's more positive for ourselves than I have, yeah. to, I must fit into these jeans or whatever. Yeah. And I know, uh, similarly to when I've talked about my uniform, there's always a lot of pushback of like, oh, how could I possibly, or I'm really into fashion, but here's what I want to challenge you with. Will you try this this year? Because it has radically changed not only how quickly I can get dressed in the morning, but how I feel about myself. So there's a really easy way that we can do this, whether you wanna create a uniform or do Courtney's challenge of having 33 items. And it starts with making your bed. So what I wanna encourage you to do is make your bed because this is where we're gonna build out our wardrobe. So I actually like to see what it is that my wardrobe is gonna be made up of. It's really helpful for me to actually lay out the pieces. Now the other benefit of this is that it's a favorites first approach. So as I'm building out my wardrobe on the bed, I'm choosing my favorite pieces, the pieces that I feel the best in. What I wanna challenge you is to not put anything on the bed that you don't feel good in. But here's what I'll tell you. You deserve to have a small wardrobe of clothes that fit and that you feel good in. I don't actually give a crap what size you are right now. No matter what size you are, I am, we all deserve to have a small wardrobe of clothes that fit and that we feel good in. And that's how we can get dressed really quickly in the morning. What I found for myself is that if when I open my wardrobe doors in the morning, if everything is an option for something that I have to wear today, it is very easy to get dressed and I don't get down on myself about not fitting into that other stuff that's hanging there or about the money that I spent on the things that I still haven't worn yet. So when I open my closet doors, I want everything to be an option. Okay, so if numbers are helpful to you, here's my current wardrobe. So I have four pairs of jeans. So I'm wearing a pair and then I have three. One are like dark and nicer and then the rest are a little bit more casual. I have two pairs of leggings and I wear these for both, like I'll wear it with a long sweater or also just with the sweatshirts. I've talked about before, I had to like up my game, right? In my casual around the house wear. So I have five sweatshirts. I'm missing, I think one's in the laundry. Um, so I have five, no, I'm wearing it. <laughs> it's this one. I have five kind of more casual, just like around the house, the tops, oh my goodness. I don't, I don't really have like traditional pajamas, but this is the stuff I just kind of like wear for pajama-ish. And then I have five sweaters. One is in the wash, I do know <laughs> that. So I have five sweaters. Okay, so I got my simplified wardrobe. It's laid out on the bed and I, I moved it to the back of the bed. Now, what do I do with everything else that's left, right? And so this is where we're gonna sort it into our three categories. So we have our time will tell bin, donations, and garbage. So you're gonna come across a lot of things like this. Like, I got this sweatshirt at the beginning of the season and I thought the color was good and it's kind of a style I like. I don't love it. So when I'm building out my wardrobe, trying to have limited pieces, it didn't really make the cut for does it fit well and do I feel good in it? So this is the perfect type of item I'm gonna put in the time will tell bin. And so I'm gonna test it out to see if I miss it. Now, I might hold up this sweatshirt and be like, I just, I really don't like this. I, I don't wear it a lot. If I know where my other pieces are, I'm more likely to grab for those. So this, I'm just gonna put into the donation box. This shirt is out of season right now, and so I don't need it in my closet if you have limited space, like cluttering it up, but I do wanna pull it out in the spring. So that I'm gonna put in the time will tell bin as well, because that's what I'm gonna pull from when I reset this, when the weather gets a little bit nicer. And then I'm just gonna go through this other stuff too, and say, okay, that can go in donations, that I don't know, so I'm gonna put in the time will tell bin. And so then we just hang on to this time will tell bin to see if we end up wanting to pull everything out. And so that's why this is a very safe process to test out having a uniform or a highly simplified wardrobe because you don't actually have to get rid of anything yet. But I do like what Courtney says, how she dealt with this over time. So you, you just set aside the extra clothes that you didn't put into your 33 items. And so let's say we get further down the road, we're really enjoying having this limited wardrobe, 
Now, what do we do with the extras? Especially, I mean, maybe there are some high quality pieces that we would like to fit into again. Did you keep any of the extra stuff or do you just let it all go? What was your approach to that? So my, this is where I brought back my kind of slow and steady approach. And I decided at the end or beginning of each season, I would go back to the stuff, take out the things I wanted to rotate in, take other stuff out that wasn't going to work for that season, and then assess what was there. Now, after the first three months, there were some things that were so obvious I would never wear again or use again. A lot of like chunky jewelry, like I wanted a, a, a necklace to match every sweater I had, mm -hmm. that didn't resonate with me at all anymore. So those were really easy to say, I'm just gonna donate those. And then after every season, there would be an invitation to let go of even more. Yeah. And I think it probably took me a little over two years before it was all gone. And so now yeah. I have my 33 items and a small like Rubbermaid container where everything lives yeah. that's not in that current yeah. collection. I love that because I think there is still so much uncertainty. Am I going back to work? Am I going to be working from home forever? Will I lose the extra weight that I've gained? And so I think that's great to be able to set it aside for a little bit, detach ourselves <laughs> from it a little bit and some of the emotions that are associated and then just to be able to test this out. There are going to be times that you don't fit back into things or that you might fit back into things. But again, not making that a primary focus, I think is really healthy. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a place where you just really need to streamline your clothing and getting dressed, I highly recommend creating a uniform. So in the past, my uniform was a black top and jeans. When we were selling real estate, my uniform was a blouse and black dress pants. And more recently, my uniform has become, again, if I'm like going out in public, my uniform is a sweater and jeans. So again, it might not be a traditional uniform, like I'm not wearing a black Munich t-shirt every single day, right? But everything fits, I feel good in it. It's just very standard what it is I'm gonna put on. I have five that I choose from, I pick one out, I put it on, and, and I go about my day. It, it uses so little energy or bandwidth, and I don't start out the day feeling bad about myself, which is such a big win. And then here's one final tip that I think is really good. Make sure to have a donation box or bin in every single clothing closet in your house. And so if you put something on and get dressed for the day and maybe you make it out the door and wear it all day, maybe you just put it on and take it back off. But if it does not fit, if you don't love it, if you don't feel good in it, if you're having to adjust it, just throw it directly into the donation box within your own closet. But I love what Cass says to also have these in your children's bedrooms because what happens? They grow out of something they send it through the laundry, and even though it's already clean, right? They put it on, realize it's too small, put it in the laundry hamper. We wash it, we put it back again, and then the cycle continues, right? And so I wanna have a space in their bedrooms where they can put stuff that doesn't fit, that they don't like, that might be stained, and from there, I will sort it out and decide what can be donated, what can be sold, what needs to be tossed. Their only responsibility is to make sure it gets into the bin, and I will take it from there. And that makes this whole process of keeping their clothing simplified really easy too. All right, now that we are dressed for the day, let's head into the bathroom. Okay, so this is literally the stuff that I was just using to get ready <laughs> before we started visiting. And the mindset shift for the bathroom is that it has to be just as easy to put stuff away as it is to leave it out. And what this means is that most of our cabinets and drawers are only a third to half full. And that's what makes it so easy to put stuff away. This seems like a no brainer, but it's amazing how the clutter creeps in. So I'm gonna use this drawer as an example. So do you see how easy it is to get to the things I use every single day? But what do most of us do? Um, let me see here. We tend to do something like this. And then we wonder why it's so hard to keep this clean, but also why it's kind of a pain in the butt to get ready in the morning, right? So shape your space promote the things you use all the time and clear out all the extra stuff. You're not actually using it anyways. And I think what's always interesting to me too, I talked about this a little bit, I have a, drawer, a video called like stuff to drawer theory, that when the inventory creeps up in any of our drawers or cabinets that 
it's almost like instinctively we don't put stuff away then. Like stuff would just sit out on the vanity or on the floor instead of getting put away. And it's because it's just a little bit too hard to put that stuff away. And so even now, as I'm just kind of making a pass through these drawers and everything, I can already feel like, oh, it's me so easy to put stuff away again now because they're gonna be decluttered and there's more room. And so anytime the inventory starts to creep up, that's when these spaces aren't getting picked up and, and put to, back together on a daily basis. Okay, so I have the top drawer looking a whole lot better and now I'm gonna move on down to the bottom drawer. And again, this like decluttering is only taking, I don't know, a few minutes because we've done the heavy lifting in the past and this is just more like maintenance decluttering. It's, it's actually pretty quick and easy. It doesn't feel painful. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's always things that I'm throwing away. I'm like, why did we buy that, <laughs> right? Like, uh, um, like we're always gonna have that. But I know now, like, just get rid of it. Keeping it's not gonna put the money back in my pocket. It's not gonna make me someday use it or Tom someday use it. So just get rid of it now and not have to worry about it, right? Okay, we have like double <laughs> the space in here now. And so now I know it's gonna be really easy to just wipe this out. But I also, I had gotten just like some Epsom salt when I take a bath, but I didn't have a place for it. Now it's gonna really easily fit in here. So that's what I was talking about with our organization, recognizing is there anything like new or different in this space that I haven't accounted for? And so now I easily have a place for that and it is not on the floor next to the vanity anymore. So that was a really easy way to make more room. Okay, so two other things that are really helpful in the bathroom. One is to know yourself. Are you the type to use stuff up? We got a subscription for deodorant and I don't like the smell of it, but it was kind of expensive. It actually came multiple times because I didn't get it canceled in time. And so I had a bunch of these, but I decided that I just couldn't get past the smell. So I wasn't willing to use it up. So anything that was unopened, I ended up donating, but there's been some other hair products and different things that I will use them up even though I don't love them. So you need to know yourself. Are you willing to use something up or do you just need to let it go? Just sticking it in the back of the closet to go to expire and to never get used isn't a good solution, <laughs> so decide, are you gonna use it up or pass it on? I also recommend having a small time will tell bin for the bathroom. So this is kind of a nice size because it fits in the back of this cabinet here. And so if you're having a hard time partying with things, like, especially things you spent a lot of money on, using a small bin like this can be really helpful. I also use this now to keep extras of things so that they're not filling up the drawers because again, it's not easy to put stuff away if the drawers are full. And now if I need something, I always look in here first before I go and buy it. And we could get frustrated and say, why doesn't all the medicine fit in the medicine drawer or container? Or we could say, I'm just gonna simplify down to what comfortably fits inside. And when we do this, we acknowledge the limits of our own unique personal space. And so what do I mean? All of the cabinets, drawers, cupboards in our home are only about halfway full if that. And what this does is it allows us to move stuff around easily, to see what's in there, to take stuff out and put it back away without having to juggle things around. So if you want your home to be easy to tidy and easy to pick up, make sure your cabinets are not over full so it's just as easy to put stuff away as it is to leave it out. Okay, now we're gonna move into another room that gets a ton of use and that is the laundry room. And so here we need to remember that clutter attracts clutter. And even something like a bunch of laundry piled up can feel like clutter and these spaces start to get out of control, especially if you have a laundry space that doubles as a mud room or you know, it's in that location between the garage and the house, something like that. If you have any kind of clutter in there, it is just a matter of time before other stuff is just getting piled up and isn't put away. So I wanna encourage you to highly streamline your laundry room, whether you have a full laundry room or just a laundry closet, only have the essentials there and it makes such a big difference. I am actually very proud of this space because Tom and I gave it like a mini makeover uh, last summer and it has actually been uh, so easy to maintain and to take care of. However, since we remodeled this bathroom, that's when a bunch of stuff ended up in there. And it is so true, clutter attracts clutter. And as soon as there was like construction stuff piled on the floor, it was like the rest of it just got out of whack. Let's talk about some of the stuff that I am decluttering from here. 
And then I'll give you a quick update on like the bin system and what we put in place and how I feel about it. So I have had this bag, it's returns. It was two t-shirts that I bought from Tom from Old Navy. In the past, I thought he liked the t-shirts there, but these ones didn't fit. And the problem was I bought them at an outlet and you can't just return stuff from outlets everywhere. And so they have been sitting there, oh, it was before Christmas that I got them. But I don't ever go back to that area where that outlet was. And so it was $10, so $10 worth of shirts there. And I have to reconcile with myself now. Is it worth it to keep, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I gotta, I have to return that, right? Is it worth it to continue to have that? And when would I possibly do that? Dana from A Slob Comes Clean, she'll say, okay, if you come across something that needs to be returned, fixed, you wanna sell it on Marketplace, list it right now, like here, today, or this week. Like, when would I go that direction this week? And I'm not. And so I, what I wanna do now, well, I don't want to. What I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna donate those two shirts because to me, it's not worth it anymore. Um, I also have this rug and this was in front of the vanity when we had our old, old flooring in because it was linoleum and it didn't, I didn't really like it so much. So we put a rug um, just to make it feel a little more current in here. But I actually hate throw rugs, scatter rugs, any kind of rugs like this because you have to vacuum them, they get kicked around and all that. So I want to get rid of this rug as well because I don't want to put it in another spot in our house and I'm not going to keep it for someday. There's also some random, it's a strap to something. I know we don't need it, so that's gonna go. But here we're bumping up against this idea of donating or getting rid of perfectly good things, right? Those t-shirts are perfectly good. That rug is perfectly good. And in the past, I think many of us were raised, I might be similar to you, that the way we assessed the value of something is what we paid for it. It does not matter if it's currently serving my needs, if it fit my needs in the past, like the rug, and now it's not anymore, that I have to maintain it, that I have to care for it, that I have to move it around. That doesn't matter. The only way we, most of us have been taught to judge value is the price tag on what we paid, not even what it's currently worth. And so this, is, this has been a huge mental shift for me to realize that there is a bigger cost than just what we paid, that there is a cost to maintaining it and moving it around and storing it and protecting it and not letting anything happen to it and remembering that we have it. That cost is significant as well. And like I said, the reason, I, we had done such a good job of keeping this laundry room up and not being a mess. Like it was so cool. People could come in and use this bathroom and I'm like, I can have the door open to the laundry room because it's not trashed like it used to be in the past. Like I've actually been very proud of myself and this simple system that we put in place. And don't get me wrong, I, I feel very fortunate to have a dedicated laundry room. I know many don't and so this is a luxury even though our house is small. Um, but I've been very proud of it because the system works well and um, like it's it normally on any other day if you would have stopped by <laughs> before we did the flooring in here, it was put together and picked up. And so what happened, like I said, Tom left stuff in there and then the rug got kicked on the floor in there and then this bag was on top of the dryer and then it's it's like it became okay for everyone else to leave you know, the bleach on top of the dryer and other pairs of socks and, and other things because there was already something else out of place there. And so that is a cost. So that bag sitting on top of the dryer has cost us in being able to keep our house tidy and peaceful and clean. And I don't know if it's the current season we're all in, but I am much more aware of the impact of my surroundings now. And we just have to keep our home picked up and tidied up in order for it not to feel like everything is chaotic and out of control around us. And so I'm so much more aware. So that's where these types of things feel even more costly, more so than ever before, having this extra inventory and stuff to keep track of. It just feels so costly right now. So like I said, I'm gonna part with this stuff. Um, I still don't like waste mo wasting money. Please don't get me, like I, like I hate wasting money. But for my own peace of mind and for the sake of our home right now, I'm gonna let that stuff go so that it is just so much easier to keep up. All right, so we got the laundry room uh, decluttered and pulled back together. And so now let's head over to the kids' bookshelves and school area. I wanna talk through some things, kids stuff, art projects, that kind of stuff. And we're gonna declutter together over there. I'm gonna have them help. And then we'll head into the master bedroom. We have the crew together. We are going to 
declutter these shelves. And we recognize because this area isn't so easy to tidy anymore that it needs some more decluttering. And so we haven't gone through a lot of these bins in quite a while, so we're gonna go through those, go through any other random stuff that's on here. We have a garbage bag, we'll bring stuff to the recycling, and just kind of see what it is that we find. Are you guys ready to go? Okay, so I just kind of see my role as a guide during this process, right? There's kind of three different categories of stuff we're coming across. There's stuff that just needs to be rehomed. There was like some board games and um, a few homeschooling books that didn't belong in this area. So getting those back to where they go, there's garbage, right? There's just started art projects, to papers, that kind of stuff. Um, as we come across art projects, this is something Corbin made at co-op. Uh, we ask, okay, is it special enough to go in your memory bin? or not necessarily and so he said not necessarily and, and put it into the garbage bag and what's nice is as we do this more and more with our kids then it's um it's not a big deal anymore and then as far as like the little treasures that they have these bins down here are where um gage gets to keep that kind of stuff so he can put anything in here that he wants to it just has to fit in here and so again totally using the container concept which is really works really well with kids and I know sometimes um, some parents will say like, my kids are super attached to stuff. And that's understandable. But again, these are skills that they're gonna take with them through the rest of their life is how I look at it. So I really want to work with them to figure out what works with them. And so for us, just having a container where they can keep their super special stuff works really well. Um, we also have their like homeschool containers on here where their daily work goes. And the problem with any kind of container is things that will hold things hold things, right? And so these containers get like just stuff put in and put in. And unless we do take a few minutes every once in a while to go back through it and declutter it, then they can accumulate too much stuff. And then this whole area doesn't function well. So we went, made a quick pass uh, through those bins as well. And ultimately came up with a bag of garbage, um, a few homeschool books to donate. Again, I'm realizing with homeschooling stuff, I know the question comes up like, how do you keep stuff like to use next year with other kids? There are only so many hours in the day and I'm realizing that it's very easy to accumulate way more homeschooling materials than we could ever possibly use. And I know that applies to like hobby things and craft things and, and that kind of stuff as well. And so I only hang on to a resource. Again, I'm still fairly new at this, right? <laughs> but a book or resource, those of you who collect books too, um, if I know for sure we are gonna use it again. Otherwise, I'd rather pass it on and let someone else make use of it and not let it rot away on our bookshelves, right? So uh, th that was only um, eight minutes worth of work, but this looks better. More, more importantly though, it feels better. <laughs> like it feels so much better now just having it look nicer, uh, more put together and easier to keep this area tidy now that it's decluttered again and we've cleaned out the organization. And let me assure you that this process gets easier the more that you do it. So if in the beginning it feels a little bit difficult, people aren't super cooperative, keep doing it because like I said, I think it's so important that we teach our kids these skills as well. All right, let's head back in here quick to talk about bedrooms. So the mindset shift for your bedroom is that it should be a peaceful retreat. It should be a place at the end of the day where no matter what happened during the day where we can rest and we can recharge and not feel stressed out. We've talked about this before, but piles and clutter that actually releases stress hormones in our body. And so if we have lots of stuff in our bedroom, it's actually not very restful, right? So I know I joke a lot of times about like getting rid of flat surfaces, but, and like we don't have nightstands or anything in here, but it's, it's so true that all of the flat surfaces in our home collect clutter. <laughs> so in here, it's books. And it's not uncommon for a stack of books to pile up next to my chair. Most of the books I read are actually on my Kindle app now, but I do still, if it's too expensive to buy the book um, on the Kindle and you can get it for really cheap, like secondhand, I'll do that. I try to use the library whenever possible, but it still just happens that books are given to us or I pick them up places. So um, I'm gonna make a quick pass through the books that are here and I know like, this is a this was like a journal that went along with a book and i really liked the book so i thought the journal would be good um but then i don't i'm like i'm not using it it's been sitting here forever so i'm gonna donate this i've never even written in it so i'm gonna donate this and hope someone is very excited um to get it at the thrift store this was a book that was helpful for a season i got a couple good ideas from it but do you know 
have you ever noticed a lot of books have like one or two really good ideas in it and you kind of get the gist of it and then you don't really go back and visit anymore i don't know maybe some people do go back and revisit the books i don't like i know that about myself so even though i really liked the ideas in here i don't find myself grabbing for it to revisit it so i'm gonna let this one go as well same with this one like i really liked it at the time but i, I picked it up to revisit it and i'm like meh i like fresh stuff sometimes so um i'm gonna let that one go this one i really like but um I don't need it down here right now, so I'm just gonna store this upstairs. This one I'm currently reading, so I'll keep that um, down here. I think both of these I'll just put upstairs. And so again, I just, I don't want the inventory here to be so much that it feels stressful, or do you notice this with like books and magazines? The FOMO, right? The fear of missing out, like, oh, I heard that book was so good and I have to read it, um, or I'm not gonna get like the good ideas out of it, right? And it's like, it's actually stressful. Like it actually feels stressful to us and we don't realize it. And like, this is our bedroom, right? This should be a peaceful and calm and relaxing place to be. And so, um, so I really do try to keep just the stuff that we are currently using out here and then either donate the rest and pass it on so someone else can actually use it or store it in a different place so it's not cluttering up our bedroom. But I did wanna to touch on real quick um, this idea of having less inventory coming in so that we don't have to do so much decluttering and inventory management. I've noticed for myself like, I really have to steer clear of the dollar store. It kind of helps that they're raising the price to $1.25, so I don't feel as much impulse to buy there. But if I do have to go there, I mean, there's still a handful of things that I get there. I like have a very specific list and I have to be very careful um, not to get extra stuff. Similar with thrift stores, even though I like to go there to get stuff for the kids, I I, I steer clear of like the home decor or the adult clothing. And I'm like, no, it's like, I have a very clear purpose what we're coming here for because I still love a good deal. And like, I will just grab stuff. Cause I'm like, oh, it's only $4. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna grab it. It looks kind of cute. And so like, I have to be very careful about thrift stores, the dollar, $3 spot at Target. Like I really try to like, just move <laughs> like beeline right past there or just do pickup so that I'm not tempted to buy extra stuff. So I'm definitely very aware of things that are like on sale, on clearance, a really good deal, garage sales, thrift stores, because I just know how easy it is to reaccumulate this stuff that we're working so hard to declutter. And so this is where I wanna give you permission to break up furniture sets, to get rid of a dresser that matches the rest of the set, to get rid of any furniture you're not using that you inherited, that you bought at a garage sale because you loved it at one time, but it's not actually serving you anymore. And so is there any extra furniture or flat surfaces that you could move out of your bedroom so that it doesn't collect clutter, it's easier to keep your, be your bedroom clean and tidy, and it truly is a peaceful place to be. Uh, I mean, obviously we've gone pretty far <laughs> with our bedroom and it's not super big but I love this this is my favorite room in the whole house it is absolutely where I recharge and I look at the out the window at the bird feeders and just relax at, at the beginning of the day and the end of the day and it has been so good Okay, now it can be at this point where we start to feel a little overwhelmed. Decision fatigue is real. So we are making a lot of decisions when we're decluttering. And so I think it can be helpful to remind ourselves why this is so important, not only for us, but the other members of our household. So I got to visit with Dr. John Deloney and here's what he had to say about that. Do you think if we would be willing to let this stuff go from our house, do you think that's gonna make a difference on our mental health, how we feel? So is, is it worthwhile to, to do this? This is very unpopular and it's just the science. And we were talking about this before. OCD, ADHD, anxiety, all these things have a direct neurological response to chaos in an environment. Mm -hmm. I wish that wasn't the case, but yeah. it's just true. And so when you look over the last 100 years, if you just took a graph of stuff accumulation mm -hmm. and the mental health statistics, you can just lay them on top of it and they look yeah. exactly the same, right? We're surrounded by so much junk and yeah. our brains can't process it. And you put on top of that, how much of that junk is purchased with a credit card. Yeah. And our brains know we're not, we're not safe because yeah. we owe this person money and that person money. It's just too much. And so, yeah. yes, I hear it all the time. I feel it all the time. Mm -hmm. People start decluttering and start getting ready to get rid of so much stuff mm -hmm. and they find peace. And like, yeah. I'm not so anxious anymore. I'm sleeping yeah. better. My kids aren't all wound up all the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're feeling convicted again why we need to keep decluttering and simplifying. So let's move into what can be kind of like the advanced decluttering or the little bit harder areas. And it's these cabinets and closets and random catch-all places. Okay, so my hope today, I'm gonna to show you this process of dismantling and going through a catch-all space, a scary space. There's actually a step-by-step -step process that we can go through. And once you do it in one space, it's just rinse and repeat. Like you just keep doing it on the other areas and even better yet, we're gonna do it in five minute chunks. So even if you have time limitations, energy limitations, family limitations, it doesn't matter because you can literally work on it at five minutes at a time. And I'm gonna show you exactly that today when you're feeling intimidated by a space, like I did not want to do this today. Again, thank you for holding me accountable. But I I just go into it and I say, I'm just gonna sort like with like, I'm just sorting like with like, and that's exactly what I've been doing here on the floor. So again, if a space intimidates you, you don't have to fix everything about it right now. Just sort like with like. And so we have very predictable standard steps that we can go through because that's the scary part is when we look at this space and we're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do with this stuff. That's why it's got put here in the first place, right? That's why stuff gets shoved into cabinets and closets because we don't know what to do with it. And so that's where we need like a very specific process. So step number one, we are just going to group like stuff with like stuff. I don't have to get rid of anything. If there's obvious trash, throw it in your trash bag. If there's obvious donations, make sure you have your donation box handy. But the, the main focus here for this first set of five minutes is just grouping like stuff with like stuff. Okay, so now uh, typically in the past now what the problem is is that I have all of these piles now and I've made a bigger mess. And so what I'm gonna do is deal with the piles that I know what to do with. So there's like um, some memory bin stuff here. I have um, a pile of garbage and recyclable some extra school supplies that don't belong in here. And on one hand, this can be intimidating because you're like, Dawn, this is what I've done before. I pull everything out and then it gets left like that, right? Don't, we're not gonna do that <laughs> this time. That's why we're starting in one specific spot, like one cabinet, one drawer, one shelf of a closet. We're not pulling everything out. We are making this manageable. So I am gonna deal with each of these now. Even though I'm not fully done with this space, I don't wanna leave all of these piles. So then at step number two, what we're doing is we are just now looking at the individual piles. Now, they're very small, manageable amounts of things. And so we're taking the bigger project and we're making it smaller and more manageable. The only thing that's actually gonna be left here then when I put this stuff away is some of the school supply stuff that I can easily stick back in here and actually have no mess here. So even though I'm pulling stuff out and sorting it like for like making piles, I'm still gonna deal with each of these piles now even though I'm not fully done, some of it will just get put back in for now. And it's giving me a much better idea of how we'll organize this. And then the other stuff that I want to keep in this cabinet, I'm just setting that aside for now. Because what's what's happening through this process is I'm getting a better idea of what's gonna permanently live in here, so then I can add in some organization. But we're not gonna get to that point yet because we want to fully declutter this. All right, we generally refer to this type of stuff as like catch-all spaces, and it can occur anywhere, really, throughout your house. It can be the bedroom floor, it can be, you know, we have these cabinets here, shelves, uh, various cabinets of the kitchen that aren't used very frequently. These spaces collect all of the random clutter, right? And they, and they can be somewhat tricky and intimidating to declutter. So here's our mindset shift in these types of areas. If you're not using it now, right now, today, this past week, this past, past month, it is highly unlikely that you are going to use it in the future. You've heard me talk about this before, but the average American uses only 20% of the items in their household. That means the other 80% is being stored for someday, for our fantasy self, for our ideal self, for some other version of ourself, or some other reality when we have more time and energy, <laughs> right? So if you are not using it now, it is highly unlikely that you are gonna use it in the future. So that's the lens that we're looking at this stuff through now but we still need an action plan to break it down and to tackle it. Step number three, we need to acknowledge how much inventory can we actually manage. So even now too, I'm seeing our old thermostat is in here. I think we had kept it to see if we would use it in a different house, but the problem with things like this is you have to be able to remember that you have it. And even now that I have that organization in place down in the basement, if I go and stick this in one of those bins, like we're not gonna remember. Like I had totally forgotten about this. And so 
it's a kindness to ourselves if we come across things that we've forgotten if we'll just let it go because it has no value to us if we can't remember that we have it to use it right so i'm going to donate this so that someone else could make use of it and i will have forgotten about this again by this time tomorrow well much sooner than that but it won't it, it, won't, it won't ever come back to me <laughs> again right Okay, so real quick, I, I want to draw attention to this point. If we forget about stuff that we have, or we can't easily locate it when we need it, it's like it doesn't exist. It has absolutely no value. So as you're going through these spaces, if you find yourself saying like, oh wow, I had no idea that was here, it's a very good idea to let it go. Like I said, that thermostat was still perfectly functional, but I didn't remember it was there. So if we found ourselves in a position where we needed a thermostat, we would have just went and bought it because I didn't know that it was there. And so again, we might be letting go of perfectly good stuff because we simply can't manage it all. Now, again, if, you're, if it's like, no, that's something I really do need to remember, then we need to find a place for it that we can put it where it's very clearly labeled and we know where it is, um, but we just can't make everything that type of priority. So again, this felt like really intimidating and scary, but once you actually start breaking it down, it's not actually that bad. I also have to be like really realistic with myself. Now I've come across quite a few workbooks, especially for the early years, and it's so easy to acquire that kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to let this book go and I'm going to keep this one um, and just try and be like really realistic because I mean, these have all been down here for quite a while without even being used. And so really realistic if I'm actually going to use it this year or if I should just let it go and let someone else make use of it. All right, more paper, completely empty notebooks. I'll put out the school supplies and then this basket. Don't, I, I think we might just donate this cause we don't use these. So I think we're going to let that go. Oh, look, <laughs> another one. <laughs> and then I just have more like extra school supplies in here. What we have to do is we have to look at the inventory so much differently than we have in the past. We don't say like, oh, well, we could use it. No, if, if, it, if there's a could in there, it's gone. If there's a, well, someday, no, it's gone because to get my home to that point where I can clean the whole thing in a couple hours, I can't have any random inventory. I can't be shuffling stuff around. That's why my house was hard in the past, right? Because of all the extra inventory. So now we have this uh, all sorted out. And so actually the stuff that I need to put back in here isn't really that much. So I have a huge pile of garbage that I'm just going to go throw away. I have some things to donate. So I'm going to go put those in our, our current donation box. And um, really there's not much else to put away here today then. So that actually feels really good. See, these spaces seem so scary and they're actually not that bad at all. <laughs> all right. So what might have hung you up in the past, things of like, oh, but somebody gave this to me. You have learned tools and skills to say, no, unfortunately, I can't manage that kind of inventory anymore. If I'm not using it right here for this school year, or if I don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm gonna use it in the next school year, it's gone. I can't manage extra inventory. Because I went through, I got rid of all the trash, I rehomed stuff that just didn't belong in here. Now I have a better idea of how I want to organize this space, right? So we always declutter first, and then we can come back and add in organization based on, you know, if you know your organizing style, I think that's always helpful. So um, like Cass always says, stuff stacked up horizontally is not organization. And we know that, right? Like us, even like this stack of books is more neatly stacked and it's still hard to see what's there. So it's like that kind of organizer. And so I actually got two of them because I wanna use one for paper uh, the printers right above here, so different kinds of printer, printing paper, and then also just like handwriting paper and scratch paper. And then the other one I actually want to use for workbooks and notebooks because, again, like I said, when they're stacked up like that, it's hard to get out what you need and to see everything that you have. And I did spend a little bit more on them and got ones that were pretty good quality just because, again, I feel more confident that, that I know this space now and how I want to organize it. So I feel okay spending a little bit more money on it. But if this were still kind of an experiment, I would have just got like a much lighter weight um, or like one of the cardboard ones and not spent <laughs> really any money on it because these were like $30 on Amazon. But I think like there would, I think they will last a really long time. It does seem very sturdy. So why don't we put this up here and 
see how it's gonna work for this paper that's here. I, I, my friend Tiffany said the other day, she said, I used to get so discouraged when I would think, oh, I already decluttered this. Why do I have to declutter it again? But she's like, as soon as I switched it to saying, no, I just have to reset this space. She's like, I didn't get, I wasn't so hard on myself. I didn't get so down on myself. And I was like, that is brilliant, right? All right. Well, I think that's actually going to work really well. And then, like I said, I'm going to put the other one together and put it straight below here. But what I, what I tell myself is, you know, when we first put these cabinets in space, I didn't actually know how they were going to function. So it's okay that now I need to go back, uh, do a little bit of decluttering, and then put in some organization. So yesterday we put this together, and I actually had it up there. It's really heavy, especially once I added all the paper to it. So I decided that I thought it might be better to put it on a bottom shelf and then I put the other one together. And so I want to put this one next to it and put workbooks and notebooks on it. And so there wasn't good organization in here. And so now I know what I'm storing in here and I know better how this space functions. So now I want to add in a little bit more organization. Doesn't that look so nice? Does that look good, Carrie? Yeah. Yeah, I really like, like it. stuff being organized. And then what I want to do is put the workbooks that I'm thinking we're going to use this year. But I like that this type of organizer is going to limit my inventory. So now I have a container. I'm going to respect the container and only fit, keep what comfortably fits in here. And like I mentioned, I'm willing to now invest in some nicer organizers. Like these were $30. That seems... That's a lot of money <laughs> to me, but I know they will last a very long time and they're good quality. And I trust myself now with the type of organization I'm putting in because like I said, it's been two years, right? Like I know how I want this space to function. For the top shelf, again, I just don't, I don't want it to keep getting piled up with stuff. So th this was the school supplies, but um, I don't actually like keeping the school supplies, the extra school supplies in here because um, sometimes kids go into it and just keep pulling out extra and extra that we don't actually need. So I actually keep the school supplies in um, the boys' closet upstairs. But I do just want to keep something here. So I think I'm going to take the school supplies out of this basket. I have a basket upstairs with more school supplies in it. And I am going to keep this basket here because I need some kind of filler there. Otherwise stuff is just going to get set there. But I don't necessarily have anything that I need to put in it right now, which just feels very strange. What's in this one still? Oh yeah, and this was just stuff to get put away. That doesn't need to go in there either. So this is kind of where, where we're landing at, and I just have a few more things here to put away. And also I tend, if I have empty baskets or bins then, I try and donate them um, because stuff that holds stuff will hold stuff and they tend to just fill up again with stuff. So once I'm, I feel pretty good about what I have going on here um, and these are a pretty low investment, then I go ahead and donate them. I never wanna be wasteful. I don't wanna get rid of something only to buy it again, but my experience has been, I get rid of it I don't ever rebuy it again, and my house is easy to maintain. So it is so win-win, <laughs> right? So I know the fear, like I, I understand it. I am frugal and cheap too. I, I fully understand it. But I just really believe too that your experience is gonna be that you don't miss the stuff and you never end up replacing it. So there's actually not as much risk involved as you might be thinking. So again, we decluttered, we're getting the organization adjusted and in place. We, we understand that we just have to keep really low inventory for these spaces to function well. And now we're getting to the end and doesn't this look so much better? And again, it didn't take that much time. <laughs> like these were five minute chunks of time. And obviously like I have strong decluttering muscles. I'm, I'm much more confident now when I declutter, but let's say it took an hour, right? Wouldn't that still be so worthwhile? And so I just wanna encourage you today, this weekend, what area could you tackle today and just spend five minutes on? just five minutes. That's that's really all it took. And and Dana's been talking a lot lately too. She was like, don't worry about the, the next five minutes and the consistency and the five minutes after that. Just here today, right now, what could you spend five minutes on? And it just, it, it's the getting started. Okay, so now that we got warmed up on these kind of contained catch-all spaces, we're gonna move on to the big scary areas. And that's our actual storage spaces, like attics, garages, and basements. Okay, so the mindset switch for our storage spaces is that just because it's out of sight does not mean that it's out of mind. Even though I can close the door to our basement and not notice the stuff that's down here, I'm still worrying about it. 
Is it getting wet? Are mice getting into it? Is it going bad? Did I forget about it? Am I using everything up, the extra kids clothes and winter gear that I had stored away? This stuff is constantly hanging over our head. And we've shared that video on the silent to-do list. This stuff is sending us messages. Keep me safe, keep me organized, don't forget about me. Use me so that the money wasn't wasted on me, <laughs> right? It is constantly sending us messages whether we're looking at it or not. Now, those same steps that we used upstairs in catch-all spaces, we can use those exact same steps down here as well. So uh, step one, I think it's important to have uh, some tools that are gonna make this job a whole lot easier. So you know me, I have bins. <laughs> I have chalk markers and these clip-on chalk labels that I really like a lot. I have a black trash bag, black is key. Uh, a donation box is super handy. I don't know that we're gonna come across any donations here, but as soon as I say that, then we will. <laughs> and then I also have some post-it notes for temporary labeling. Uh, we're gonna talk about grouping like with like and, and the categories we're gonna use for these, but I don't necessarily know right on the onset here because it's not my stuff, uh, what all the categories are gonna be. So post-it notes can be really nice for temporary categories. All right, well, why don't we just get started and then we can talk through what it is that we're doing. Okay, I'm also gonna time this whole process to see how long it takes because in my head, I have built it up to be like a 12 hour ordeal with a, just 12 hours of pain and agony, right? I don't think, now that I'm looking at it again, I don't even think it's gonna take that long. <laughs> so uh, step number one, I am labeling the bins that I know that I'm going to need so that I have a spot to sort into. So I already know there's some categories here like painting supplies and caulk and um, light bulbs that there's a good amount of stuff there that I can put into. So that feels good. And then um, I'm gonna start sorting into those and just looking for obvious trash. Uh, another thing to mention is, as far as our organizing styles, I'm a ladybug, which means I like big, broad categories and out of sight. Tom's a cricket. He likes stuff out of sight, but he likes much more detailed categories. And so that's not me. So I'm just using my organizing style right now. Cass will say, Cass from Clutterug will say, like, default to the, the broader category if there's multiple people that are working together on it. So I'm going to go big, broad categories right now. And then from there, if Tom wants to break it down into smaller categories, he is more than welcome to. <laughs> So don't get me wrong, even when I look at a space like this, it feels very intimidating and overwhelming. It's like, oh, where do I start? Um, I'm not gonna know what to do with any of this stuff. And so that's where creating a few categories that we know and then sorting like with like is the easiest place to start because what I'm telling myself is I'm not making any hard decisions right now. If I come across something, I'm like, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm just setting it aside. I'm trying to get the bulk of the stuff into these categories that I already have here and just throwing away the trash and relocating stuff that I know has a home elsewhere. And so as I was going then, I did also decide um, to make a category for wiring. I'm like, oh, I think we're gonna come across a lot of wiring stuff. So I just put it on a post-it note and then I also have a temporary category for tools because Tom doesn't keep his tools down here. They should be up in the garage. Um, but you know how it goes, like tools will wind up down here. So I might not leave that as a permanent category, but it just feels nice to have a spot to put that kind of stuff right now. And so again, I just use post-it notes, so it's very temporary and easy to change if I want to. Okay, I wanna give a six minute update <laughs> because I can't believe how much better this feels in six minutes. So again, here are my bins and you can see like the painting one, um, and the light bulb one is starting to get filled up a little bit. The other ones are pretty empty still. Um, but I was able just even to get rid of a lot of garbage and a chair that was in there. I don't know. Maybe it's not coming across. In person here, it feels so much better. And it feels like I've made a lot of progress in just like six minutes, like I said. And so I'm feeling very energized and motivated to keep going right now because I can actually see progress and I feel like I'm making a difference. And I feel like when Tom walks down and sees this, he's gonna be like, oh wow, that looks awesome. He will ask me, don't get me wrong, he will ask if I threw anything away or got rid of anything. And, and, and I'll very honestly be able to tell him, no, I didn't. I, I only got rid of trash. Otherwise, I just put stuff into categories. Doesn't it look so much better? All right, why don't we keep going? Okay, so let's just talk through some of the stuff I'm finding. I think it's all the same stuff you're finding in your spaces too, right? Um, uh, it turns out this black bin has like a bunch of extension cords in it. 
Um, I feel like Tom would want those. So, and they'll probably go out to the garage. So I'm setting that aside to ask him about. I, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna keep, I don't, again, I don't want things to hang me up or to stall out my progress. And those types of things in the past would have been like, oh, well, see, I don't know what to do with this stuff. So I can't possibly tackle an area like this. And I'm like, no, I'll just set it aside. I'll ask him what he wants to do if he wants to, for us to create a space down here to keep them, or if it's something he wants to like, roll up and hang up in the garage. Um, I'm also coming across things like all these like user manuals, these random baggies with like a few little parts left in it. Like, so that that's all gonna go and it feels so good <laughs> to get rid of this kind of stuff. But for me, I am just tossing it. So you do what's best for you in your situation. Here's the thing, we're not good, like we don't keep um, owner's manuals, like here's one for our water softener, because we found, like Tom had to, you know, place the, replace the element in our water heater a little while back. We didn't consult the manual. He went online and found a YouTube video of how to change it, right? So for us, the season we're in, there's nowhere where I could put this where he would know to look for it and then that's how he would get the information. And so all of this stuff, even this, like this little random baggie with stuff was buried in a bin. There is no way he remembered that was there. Now, if he did, and I, or I wasn't sure, I could create a spot for this kind of stuff. Like I was like, well, I could have a miscellaneous bin or a random parts bin or something. And so there, there are solutions. So if you're like, oh, I couldn't possibly throw that away. That's totally fine create a bin for it. Like it, it still has to have a home, right? It just can't float around like this. This is stressful when it's the bins of random stuff, right? And then there's also just like some packaging stuff that I could tell had gotten wet. Again, our basement gets wet. And so that was just very clearly trash that I was throwing away. So actually so far it, it's been going really well. Where we're at now, another like 10 minutes in, I can see floor. Um, I can start working on the shelves now. Like this is actually going way better <laughs> than I thought that it was gonna. So I actually am feeling very encouraged right now. And so again, I know how we build these things up in our head to be so scary and so intimidating, but I think, I think if, if we've been hanging out for any amount of time, I think you're looking at stuff differently. I think you've been building up your decluttering muscles. Certainly if you're getting to a point to tackle something like this, you've built up your decluttering muscles. And so something that might have even a year ago completely you know, stumped you, thrown you off or whatever, you have a different skill set now than you did in the past. And so I really feel confident for you too, that you can tackle areas like this and we have a system and a plan and it doesn't have to be so scary and intimidating. Okay, well, um, why don't we get, uh, go closer to the shelf and I'll, well, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> see, now something, now something's totally gonna throw me out there, right? But I don't think so. All right, why don't we keep going? So what's so great about grouping like stuff with like stuff is we start to see how much we have. Like the painting bin is overflowing because we had so much stuff for painting. It was just all, all over the place. So we would just buy it again, right? <laughs> and so same with like all the tubes of caulk. The reason I knew we needed a category for that was because Tom was like, oh, hey, we go run in the basement and see if we have some adhesive. And I'm like looking through them all. I'm like, oh my goodness, we have 80, five of these, right? And they're kind of expensive. So if they're all in one place, it's very easy to see what we have and to go look there first, obviously, before we go and buy it again. I'm also still coming across some just like really random things. And so, like I said, I could just create a bin of random stuff, but there's not that much. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is actually ask Tom because I kind of just have a feeling this stuff doesn't need to be kept anymore. So I'm just gonna make a little pile here and then ask him real quick what it is, like if these can be kept. So we have this shelf just about cleared off. So I think I'm gonna start moving some bins onto it and then we'll keep going, but we're making great progress. This feels really good. All right, let's look at this top shelf for a second. I'm seeing there's a ceiling fan up here. It's such a bummer. We had it put this in when we first moved in, in the dining room and then realized it was just way too big for that space. And then eventually Tom put in recess lighting, which we love and don't actually even miss the ceiling fan. But we had spent over a hundred dollars on this beautiful ceiling fan. And so at the time it felt very wrong just to get rid of it. But what happens? It just comes down here, sits in storage and no one is making use of it. So I'm going to get all the pieces together, put it in a box and donate it because it's still like brand new. And once it's gone, that's actually gonna clear out a ton of space up here. All 
Okay, so I'm really happy with the progress we've made so far, but I think it's also important to know our limits. So about 10 minutes ago, I was feeling really energized and like, wow, this is going so well, like I wanna keep going. And now I just realized I'm like starting to feel kind of tired and like, oh, this is getting hard. And so decision fatigue is real. <laughs> and so if you kind of get to a point where, where it's just feeling miserable, um, it's probably a good idea to take a break and then come back again. But the great thing is we've re-familiarized ourselves with everything here. We've realized we have the skills to be able to deal with this. So it doesn't feel so intimidating to come back and tackle it again in a little bit. Okay, so back at it. Uh, I had a little coffee <laughs> ready to go. Okay, so I wanna work on this shelf together now. I do have my bins here for my categories to sort into. So um, that helps me. I feel like I'm prepared to work on this. And then I thought we could just talk through, I've been putting putting off this shelf um, because there just seems like there's random things I'm not gonna know what to do with. So I thought we could talk through some of this stuff together and, and I'll just show you like what I come up against and what my plan is for it. Okay, so one thing that I have learned to do, if I'm gonna bring something down to a storage space or our basement in a box, I write on the outside what is in it and I just have that side face forward. So that has helped as far as having like mystery boxes. But as I say that, guess what's right here? A box with nothing written on it. So um, this is pulls, like drawer pulls, um, extra ones from the kitchen. I do want to keep these. And then these are more, oh, I did write it on this one. Okay, good. Uh, drawer pulls. So those are more of those. So I, um, I actually want to combine these into one um, box. So I'm going to do that, but I won't waste our time right now. So like this, we actually have three of these and this is dried, um, like mortar thin set, not just like mud. Um, so this is not going to come off. And I know we have two more that I've already come across. So I'm just going to throw this away. And then we have an extra container. I'm gonna set aside to see if we need it to organize. And if not, um, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I don't like having extra empty containers around because then they just fill back up with stuff. This is what I was worried about. We got this to do, um, to like seal our ducks. We thought it was always warm in the basement and not upstairs. We thought if we could seal them off better, but then Tom found a different solution. So we have had these, they haven't been opened. And so, our home improvement store, you can return stuff um, for store credit without the receipt, even though it's been a while, we've returned stuff after a couple years. Um, and then I also had found a bag of plumbing fixtures. And so we're gonna return those as well because um, both Tom and I have realized if we just try to like keep this on hand for like another time, even like the plumbing stuff, he always, every time he has a project, he just goes to the store and gets the stuff he needs for that specific project. So there's no sense in trying to store it. And so I'm just gonna return this and not have to deal with it anymore. And similarly was um, this soffit vent. I don't remember what wasn't right about it, but it wasn't right. So I'm just gonna dust off this box and return this as well. So that's gonna go. This was like extra tile from our bathroom. We don't even have this tile in there anymore. So I'm gonna throw this away. And then here's like another bag of stuff from our home improvement store. Flex seal tape, I'm gonna, this is gonna get returned as well. So again, I'm not even gonna try and keep this stuff. If it is unopened and we're not using it, it is going back to the store. Even if we would take a little bit of loss from not having a receipt, we just forget about it. Like we can't remember everything that's here. So more tile that can get thrown away. This, this is the worst. This is like a little random bin of stuff. Um, and so I'm not, I don't feel qualified to go through this. So I'm going to put it in the tool bin for now. And it is what it is. Empty bag. <laughs> um, some kind of LED light. I'm assuming we were testing it out to see if we wanted it upstairs. That's gonna go back to the store. And a window insulation kit. We have new windows now, so it's fun. We don't have to use this. So this box is a little beat up. I think I'll just donate this because I don't know that they would take this back to the store, but we don't need that. And, oh, I thought, I'm like light bulbs. I have a bin for light bulbs. Nope, empty light bulb box. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, and then, this, um, I'm gonna, this can go back as well. Wow, this whole shelf was like all returns and I was so scared of it. 
Oh man, all right. Tools and, oh, this case got opened upside down. I'm gonna flip that open or flip it over and get everything put back into it. And then that's gonna go on the lower shelf. And then we are pretty much done. This is just a couple pieces of our old flooring. So I'm just gonna let that go too. We don't, we don't have time to manage that kind of stuff. All right. Wow, I feel really good. That actually wasn't as bad <laughs> as I was expecting it to be. <laughs> okay, I still have a little bit to deal with on this bottom shelf, but I feel like I need to see some progress. So I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down, cleaning off the shelves and putting bins in place. And I just feel like I need that win right now. And then that's gonna give me the motivation to keep going. <laughs> so here we go. All right, I decided I wanted a matching bin for the plumbing stuff. You don't have to have nice bins for this, right? I, I don't know, I feel like we've gotten to the point, I kind of talked about this when we did the other part of the basement where um, now I want everything to look nice and match and all that, but we're like eight years in, <laughs> right? And I'm, I feel a lot more confident about my organizing and decluttering and that we'll be able to maintain this and everything. I mean, I started out using diaper boxes in the beginning for my organizing, so and it worked just fine and it was free. <laughs> so, and I do, I really like these um, clip-on chalk labels. I think I'm gonna be one short though, which is kind of a bummer. All right, so we got the top two shelves done. Let's keep working our way down and we're just about done, which feels really good. One hour, 48 minutes. Isn't that remarkable? Um, so we were keeping track of how long it would take. And that's how long it took to get from here to here. And now what we're trying to decide is, should we go all the way and paint the floor? What's your vote? Paint the floor. <laughs> Corbin likes things to be done all the way, yeah. right? And to look really good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we're gonna paint the floor and then we'll also show you everything piled up that we are donating, tossing, and returning um, because that made a huge difference in being able to get this space simplified. So I have to run to the store and get some more paint then. So mm -hmm. we'll grab some paint and we'll show you everything that we're getting rid of. And so again, going through the lens of decluttering or organizing someone else's space, something we can do to give them peace of mind is say, I'm not gonna get rid of anything. I will pile it up to, off to the side. And, and so if you wanna go through it or look through it or make sure I'm not getting anything, rid of anything you would want, it's all here. So here are our garbage bags. Um, the, these are the bags of stuff and things we're gonna return. This is to donate. Um, this is like the extra trim and stuff that I think we can get rid of some other garbage stuff over there. So it doesn't look like much. In person, it feels like a lot more, <laughs> but um, that I couldn't believe how much just garbage there was. Empty packaging, um, scraps from remodeling projects. And so just even getting that out, can you see this bag is like, ugh, it is full. <laughs> so I know we have another one started. So. Um, just getting rid of that kind of stuff, it's amazing how much extra space that it created. But I just want to mention too, I know we're kind of talking about like, you know, decluttering other people's stuff and organizing it and all that. And I know um, I had a really great conversation in our mentorship group last week that it, it can be really defeating when we live with people that aren't supportive of our decluttering efforts and you know potentially are even the opposite and criticize what we do and I've just heard from so many recently that it just makes it so hard and so I don't know that I have a lot of great solutions for that other than to say I'm sorry and I wish that um, it were easier <laughs> because like that's just really hard when you when you've decided the value like you believe it'll benefit you and your family um, and it just feels like you're being criticized or put down for what you're trying to do. And so I'm sorry, that really stinks. And um, I know you're definitely not alone. And even a video like this can bring up thoughts of like, well, I wish my, you know, so-and-so would let me touch their stuff, right? Even, I just wanna help, even just to organize it, right? In a really crude way. <laughs> so anyways, I'm sorry if that's the boat you're in. And ugh, I just, I do know that it can be really difficult, so. I'm sorry for that. I think we're ready to get this all put back together and look at the, the final before and afters. That's the best part, isn't it? And I really wanna encourage you that if this stuff has accused you of being lazy and unorganized and buying stuff that you didn't need or buying stuff for a fantasy self, it's okay, you're not alone. No one actually ever taught us how to manage this stuff, 
how much to keep, how long to keep it for, or even how to organize it. We weren't taught these things and the generations before us simply didn't have to deal with as much inventory as we have had to. It's never been easier to get stuff, <laughs> right? And so we're learning this as we go, we're figuring it out. But what I really wanna encourage you is that if you will highly simplify your storage spaces, you are gonna be taking a mental load off. <laughs> you are gonna be lifting this mental load and you are gonna have so much more mental energy and capacity to dedicate to other things that really matter to you. So this stuff doesn't matter and you're not gonna miss it. Okay, now if you wanna get the kids involved, maybe there's some areas that have their stuff, let's head back upstairs and I'll show you my tactics for doing that. All right, I went back and forth if we should talk about toys in this video, but here's what I'm gonna tell you. Minimalists know that kids don't need toys to thrive. Marketing, society, grandparents tell us we need our kids to have lots of toys to have a happy childhood. And the truth is, is that if you will research it yourself, you are gonna find that kids thrive in simplified spaces where they can use their imagination. Kids don't need toys to be occupied, they need their imagination. And the awesome part is their imagination goes with them wherever they go. That's all I'm gonna say on that. There's so much more I could say on that, but we're gonna let it go. I encourage you to research it on your own so that you have your own convictions around toys. I'm just the, I'm just the messenger, right? That, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> And I actually recorded a whole hour long teaching about my thoughts on toys, why it's so important to declutter them and how to do so. And so I'm gonna link to that down below. If you are interested in seeing the full version of that, I'll put that link. So it's too much, It's toys are actually a really big topic. You really gotta understand the why to be able to declutter them successfully, I think. So that's why I don't wanna try and cram it in here. I'm just gonna link that down below if you find that helpful. Okay, so that's a pass around our entire house, shifting our mindsets and how we look at stuff. And if your mind is constantly like trying to revert back to safety and keeping stuff and old ways of thinking, it's actually just doing its job. Our brains are wired to take the path of least resistance. So again, don't get too hard on yourself if any of this still feels hard, you get hung up on certain categories of things, that is completely natural. But the best thing we can do is stick together and keep challenging these thoughts and these mindsets together. And even if it takes a little bit longer than you would like, you're still gonna be so glad that you did. And by this time next year, your house could look completely differently. If you need a little extra support, we do have a mentorship group and I'm in there every day. We do very specific challenges, celebrate with each other, we hold each other accountable. And so you can find details about that down below as well. But overall, I'm excited for you. As we reset our house after Christmas this year, it was probably the easiest yet. And so every single day, I just continue to be so glad and so grateful for our simplified home. There's just so few things things that I regret getting rid of, but the benefits have been even better than I ever expected. So of course, I really want that for you too. All right, I love you. I hope your decluttering efforts go really well and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.